Hey besties, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Sebastian, the Gay Bestie, and I'm back again today with a new video here. Now, I'm not sure if this one's so much a story time or me just being like hella tea and talking about my experience growing up Haitian, like first generation born in America. So it's kind of like those things I've talked about here and there and discussed like, you know, certain things my parents may do to me or how we have to treat people or things have to go. But I'm going into like my full experience and also being that I am gay, it's a little different. So we'll talk about my experience and let's jump in today's video. Wait, pause. I lied. We're not jumping in the video just yet. <laughs> what I need you guys to do to make sure, as always, make sure that you definitely subscribe to the channel. If you're new, congratulations, you're officially a bestie. So hit that subscribe button, okay? And also, make sure you put on your notifications because sometimes people post videos and you guys don't get the notification that it's up. Well, I'm telling you right now, the video is up. So friend, don't miss another video. Catch up on the other videos and definitely tell a bestie about me, Sebastian the Game bestie right here on the YT. All right, let's jump into the video for real this time, okay? <laughs> so, officially we're back and I'm here to tell you guys about the experience I had growing up Haitian in America in Jersey. Now, this is like some weird things I have to like break down. And I say weird, but traditional things or even things that I had to really understand when it comes to myself. First things first, I am the second born of three. So I originally was born in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and my parents had then moved to Linden. So Linden is like really close um, to where I grew up was in, Rose in Roselle. So growing up with my parents, friend, it's just like, where do you even begin? My parents are traditional, but they started off kind of strict. I don't know what it is about parents, but as you get older, they kind of like chill and they're not like so horrible or so strict. My little brother got it really easy because he didn't really get all the beatings and whoopings. Like my parents played no games. When it came to beatings, Haitian parents are brutal. They will grab literally anything they can get. You know, they call it child abuse now, but my parents called it discipline, okay? It was like, we're gonna discipline that ass because we don't need you messing up anything in this house. But I was the kind of child that touched too much and I talked too much. And when I say I touched too much, like for real, for real, I would break everything my mother had. I was always curious. I was kind of like, kind of obsessed with my mom. My mom looked like a glamazon to me, like a goddess. So whenever I seen her, it was kind of like a, ah. Uh, I think most kids have that way. But me and my mom were like really, really close. I was a mama's boy. I followed her everywhere she used to go. When we used to go to like Haitian parties, and some of y'all out there really understand what I'm talking about, we used to go to these Haitian parties. They would party like crazy. They'd be dancing all night long, doing a little one, two step like this all night long right i would push my dad out the way so i could dance with my mom because my mom just seemed like everything i wanted to be no that does not mean i wanted to be a woman or i was gonna go through some kind of change let's be for real all i wanted to do was pretty much exude the kind of grace she had and i wanted to have the same presence walking into a room so that was like my obsession with femininity and my mother. So I grew up fairly feminine. I was that little boy who played with dolls. My cousin were the same age. I used to go over to her house and I would play with her dolls. Where I can say my family lucked up was, I guess it's kind of like, like family history too, because my dad, he, he was in Haiti while his siblings came to America. They don't all have the same mom. He had a different mother from his siblings. He ended up staying in Haiti while they were all here. So they were more progressive thinkers in certain things. But my my dad was not the kind of man that would tell me being his obviously gay son to man up. My dad was the kind of person that was very more so the kind of dude who encouraged me to be who I was, whoever that was. Like he used to tell me that I was different, but he never told me what made me different. And I thought he meant different in the sense of like maybe I was like smart or maybe different in the sense of like, I'm just not like my brother, but I never thought he was disgusting like my sexuality. I just kind of thought my sexuality was something everyone around me always looked over. One thing I remember my aunt was here just the other week and we had a great conversation over dinner and she had brought up, she used to watch me, she knew that I was gonna grow up and just be who I am. But I remember I thanked her and I said, like, thank you for never making me feel different. And at the end of the day, that's what we all, we, like when you're young, <laughs> it's so crazy. It's like everybody wants to blend in. But when you grow up and you kind of like, especially if you get comfortable in your own skin, you don't want to blend in. You just want to be you. And whoever that is, that's what you kind of like exude. You love to be. That's what you embrace. But that was like 
something I always thanked her for because even though I would play with my cousin's dolls, it was like, do what you want. If you want to play with the doll, play with the doll. It was never anything secretive and her husband was even better at it because he was male and he never gave me any kind of pressure. He had said to me, he would say to the other boys, like my cousins that would tease me for playing with dolls, he would say stuff like he played with dolls too and that he did it. So it made me feel like I was no longer the other, at least in their grace, in their graces. Back to my parents, you know, I'd be ranting, you know, I like, I like to talk. There's certain traditions. For example, when you walk into a room, and most of you I know this too, when you're a child and you walk into someone's graces at like maybe their home or let it be a party, you have to greet every single person. And they only they don't even address you by name. They address you by whose child you are. Like my father's name is Louis, they would say, Oh, that's Lulu's son, or say Petit Lulu. That's like my that's you don't really even have identity anymore. You're just that person's child. For every woman, we had to kiss every woman on the cheek and we had to shake every man's hand. If you're a girl, then you just have to kiss everybody in the room cheek to cheek kiss and it was one of those things where I didn't even realize it was an American thing to do I just thought it was always a greeting thing to do like there was this one time when I was in seventh grade I'll never forget it was my <laughs> seventh grade teacher math teacher he had brought his fiance in for something I don't know if she was like maybe some kind of trip but it was kind of odd she came by the school she came by the school and when I saw her I shook her hand first thing I did guess what I did friend I reached out, pulled her in, and gave her a kiss on the cheek. Like, hi, how are you? And I remember everybody was like, what are you doing? Like, what? I'm not supposed to do that. Like, I'm not supposed to kiss her on the cheek. I didn't know. So even now, like, getting older, and you meet certain people or family members of other people, it's kind of like you have to adapt to American culture because you don't want to come across rude or you don't want to pop anyone's bubble. You don't want to get in anyone's way. So it's just like, well, I don't know how do you greet because some people are huggers, some people are shake hands. You know, in Asian culture, they bow. And to be in America, we're in a big melting pot. So it's kind of like, well, what do you do? And sometimes you awkwardly, well, I've had this moment. I've awkwardly just been like, hi. I don't know, but I know if I'm meeting someone Haitian and their parents are Haitian, the first thing I gotta do is, if especially a mother, okay, I'm coming up like, hi, how are you? Kissing the cheek while I'm shaking your hand at the same time. That's just like, it's very European, but let's not forget, historically speaking, Haitians were the land of like pretty much where the French took over. Long story short, but we inherited some of those customs of when you greet someone, hey, you give them a kiss, and that's just one of those things, friend. At this point, I don't just be kissing strangers, but I know if I'm meeting my, my parents, people that they know or whatnot, okay, it's gonna be a kiss to expect, <laughs> okay? Let's talk about fashion now, okay? Um, <laughs> I hated how my mother used to dress me. One thing, like, I used to hate it because for a minute, they would, we were in Catholic school. So my parents purposely put us in Catholic school to get a great education or a better education than public school offered. So my parents would bust their butts, like, working jobs. My mother worked in, um, a few industries, she had one time, she was a cleaning lady at a actual office. I think it was Merrill Lynch. I don't mind being very honest. It's one of those kind of experiences. She then started working in um, the, the assistance like for the elderly she started doing that for some time and for some years and like that's one of those things that kind of like show me that my parents bust their butts to give me opportunity so it's like one of those things ready right down inside i cannot be less than great like i need to be great for them um, my father worked in construction most of my life from <laughs> from what i can remember and they worked hard, like they don't play no games. So when it came to our education, they looked at our education as an investment. So the more that we know, the better opportunities that we can then create for ourselves and then create for those around us, of course, because Haitians are really big on community. Whether it be family, friends, loved ones, whatever, it's really big on making sure you support each other. Don't get it twisted, there's some shady folks now, like especially in the background that will try to tear you down behind your back. But that's any community, but still, we pride ourselves on family so for me family does play a really hard and important position in my life i remember going to catholic school and there was a point where my parents could not afford it anymore and they're like okay we have to put them in public school because it's getting so expensive and we ended up transferring to public school now this is the scary part for me because majority when i was in elementary school and Catholic school, most of the people I was in class with were white. So then when I went into the public school with predominantly black students, it was real, friend, because there was like no 
like uniform so what they would do is like my parents didn't care for brand names they were like Tommy who what like who that no we're going to pay less and getting you these shoes me at the time I didn't really care I just felt like okay shoes are shoes I just got shoes that's how I saw it I didn't care about names or labels but when I got to that public school and them kids they tore me apart why are your pants so tight why you talk like that what brand is your shirt I just wasn't ready for it. I did not realize these things were important to people, but they technically were. I remember being so pressured because first and foremost, Haitian parents believe it, at least my Haitian parents were like, <laughs> we don't bring you to school for fashion, we bring you to school for education, so go to school for education. So me coming home crying about kids are teasing me over what I'm wearing, my parents like, what? You think I care? You got food, you got clothes, you got TV, go to school. Like, that's it. There was no debate. We're not going to sit in here and talk about where we're going to shop at next. That ass friend, like, we used to, my mom, her mall, like, I didn't go to a mall until I was 13. Judge me if you might. That is the honest to God truth. I never stepped into a mall until I was 13 because my parents, for one, never took us anywhere. And then what they ended up doing, my mom would take me to this, um, we used to go to Broad Street. Broad Street and Elizabeth, if you out there, shout out, you know what it is. But Broad Street and Elizabeth had, like, all, like, those little shops. Um, so we used to go to Bobby's. This woman loved Bobby's. And Bobby's is one of those stores where <laughs> it's crazy, but they used to have like all these things in bins and you can purchase, and people buy stuff in bulk all the time to send back to their country. Not just if you're Haitian, Jamaicans would go there. Um, even when it would be like Mexicans would go there. What I appreciate about Jersey is like, it was a melting pot of a whole bunch of cultures. No one was really ever just, oh, I'm from America. It's like, no, my family's from X, Y, and Z. So I was used to that. There was a point where my older brother, like this is kind of, this shows how we were like just bad little kids. My older brother, <laughs> he was skinny, but he also wanted those name brand clothes because when you come from Catholic school from so long and then you end up in this new realm of other students who are judging you for certain things. Like I said, when you're young, you want to blend in. So my older brother used to get my older cousin's old clothes so that he could wear like the baggy clothes to school because back then it was like late 90s early 2000s baggy clothes is what it was so everyone loved baggy clothes what he would do is he would wear my cousin's clothes to school and change in the bathroom and i would wear his clothes because he was a little bit bigger than me so then i would end up going to the bathroom i would go into school early this is so crazy i would go to school early but i would have clothes in my backpack so when i got into the bathroom at school i would change right away and then i would come and sit down it's only because you can only hear the taunting so much of your classmates i never forget it there was this white girl blonde hair um but she used to wear like really baggy clothes to school and she would even rip me like why are your pants so tight i'll never forget those moments and i remember i was just like confused like what are you talking about I'm like what girl bye <laughs> like but it's only but so much you can take when you're young and you try to like hold yourself together and blend in and then you know you're different uh, not only culturally but also your sexuality you just start to see the difference between you and other people but until you get to those terms of understanding who you are which takes years that does not happen overnight i always commend people who were like brave when they were younger now i was a child who always had a mouth though so if you came for me I, I was i was right back i would say something but i really wasn't that kid that wanted to fight even though as you can see in my videos i've had my moments and where i had to defend myself but it was just one of those things like even though people had different backgrounds kids are cruel like that's why now little kids are just mean like they and they're honest but friend there are some mean kids out there and they try to just dig when they see something different they just dig 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 i mean especially slapping being haitian on top of that you know you had some you had something to just try to make it through like you have to pull something from inside to pull it through and you only learn to appreciate what makes you different in time and that was one of those things that i had to blend in for a minute or wanted to blend in for a minute yeah life right <laughs> so when even when it came to like cultural foods this is what i want to talk about too because because growing up with my parents, the parents I had, we never like really ate out like that. Still to this day, I'm 27 years old, almost 28. I have never been to a restaurant with my parents and like sat down and had like dinner or anything. Don't, I'm not gonna say it's all Haitian people, but I'm gonna say my parents are just like what? They were just like, I can't even say this. Like I called my dad cheap once when I was younger. I'm actually make a story time about that. Like 
being an actor, you know what, forget it. I'm gonna definitely do a story time about that when I call him cheap. Um, but they were cautious where money went, but also something that's really important, like not just Haitian community, but in black culture, we're not really educated on economics and money and investments. So all of my parents thought they were being frugal. They weren't really managing money the best way. That's not their fault. It's only because everyone needs to be educated by that. My dad and my mom, we always had dinner at home and we never really bought fast food like that. Fast food was like one of those things that were like, oh, it's there, but we didn't really like cry for it. My mother, every like Sunday, she would cook a big old pot of rice and it's usually rice and beans. Sometimes we have black rice. Some of you may know, do you have it, John John? It's like a mushroom that makes the rice black, but it's so bomb. Usually made with peas in there, so it's so good. I just realized when I was in Miami not so long ago, Cubans make it too, because we went to a Cuban restaurant and they had, I was like, oh, that's what's up. Like, it's, must, it's definitely a Caribbean thing. We would have, like, usually my mother would focus on Sunday dinners. I don't know why Sunday in particular, but it was really Sunday dinners, and that's kind of like how things were, like, but we always had that food last for a couple of days. So if she cooked on Sunday, that food would last until, like, maybe Tuesday, you get maybe scraps by like on Wednesday. But one thing I appreciate is like my parents worked hard. Like they went hard for us. And just so that we can kind of like push the needle further. But it's real out here. Like it's so real. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's one of those kind of experiences that we've had growing up with my parents in America. And it's kind of like, I remember when I got to school, especially like my, not got to school, but my, my senior year of high school, my parents drilled, or predominantly my dad, he drilled into our heads that we are Haitian first. And we, and everything else follows. And I remember I got into arguing with my teacher because I took an African American history class and she was trying to tell me that I was Haitian American. And I was like, no, I'm Haitian. And she was like, no, you're Haitian American because your culture may be Haitian, your, um, but your nationality is you are American because I was born here. Yeah, but I was like, yeah, that's cute, but I'm Haitian, so I just go by being Haitian. And she's like, no, you're Haitian American. I was like, no. I'm, we went like back and forth for like a good five minutes. I'm telling her why I was why I was Haitian. I think it's something like a sense of pride that I'm glad that my culture does give me. And it's not a sense of saying that I'm better than anyone else. No, I just find it important to love all parts of you. And being that, like every time I feel like I go home, I feel like I'm right back in Little Haiti. There are some things that my people do that I'm kind of like friend. Do we have to do that again? I've learned to appreciate and love it more and more of who I am and how it makes and shapes me because it allows me to be sensitive to other people's cultures, knowing that if someone's different from me, it's fine. I'm here to learn. I'm here to see. I'm here to understand. And I come from a place of understanding because when you have so many things different about you, it molds the person that you are. And I take pride in all of it. I take pride in being Haitian. I take pride in being gay. I take pride in being black. And yes, I still consider myself a black person. Um, I take pride in all of those things I take pride in humanity you know it's just one of those things I just feel like it's a beautiful experience to just be alive and to experience and to feel I don't think we appreciate that enough of one another so that is like my experience of growing up Haitian in Jersey it also like gave me some like feedback and like well not feedback but I gave me some background when it came to my family and growing up and the experience of it so hopefully this gave you like some kind of understanding maybe you could relate maybe you you understand the whole fashion thing maybe you even understand how it felt to be in my shoes for a little bit and I actually have this you know I have a couple of stories that I'm thinking into myself right now but I'm definitely gonna do one about my dad being cheap <laughs> when I called him cheap and I think I'm gonna talk about this one guy like day camp because I have a really good thing about this one dude that used to taunt me so much in day camp but I'm gonna talk about that so stay tuned for some videos coming out soon about those topics I so appreciate you guys for rocking with me in front of the video I absolutely love you and adore you you know how we get down so if you have a friend that hasn't heard about the gay bestie yet make sure you tell them I'm the gay bestie here my name is Sebastian on YouTube be sure to definitely subscribe Tell a bestie again and tell another bestie after that. Because we're trying to get these numbers up and grow this channel. I'm enjoying the slow growth because I'm appreciating it more and more as I go. But one thing you won't stop is this hustle, okay? <laughs> but I thank you guys again for watching this video. If you want to find more um, ways to get in touch with me on social, all my links are always down below. So check the description box, get it for yourself. And I appreciate you. I love you and I thank you as always. Until next time, as always, love. Thank you.